joining me today. We are going to create a new card. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, sorry, it's kind of gloomy in here today. I don't know if you can see, but ooh, we have gloom outside. But that's okay. We are going to have cheerful fun in here today. Okay, well, we're going to do our best. How about that? We're probably going to make a lot of mistakes, but we're going to make a fun card. So, if we... Oh, wait, let's show you what we're going to make. Ta-da! We're going to be using all die cuts. All die cuts, all the time. For you. Let's turn the camera down and get going. Okay, double checking my camera here. It looks good. All right. This is, you know, showed you what we're doing. These are, this is the stamp set we're using, Sending Love. This is the Sending, oh no, where is it? Ah, it's over here. We're also using the matching die set. Uh, we're going to use stylish shapes, um, but there are alternatives to this one if you don't happen to own this one. And this is the Perennial Postage. Now these two are out of the new mini catalog. Also, the DSP that we're using today, this is one of the Sunny Days, whoop, there we go, one of the Sunny Days pieces. So that's the back side of it. And this is free. So basically, if you order this stamp and die set, you can get the paper for free. Gotta love for free. That's the lovely thing about celebration. Right. So I have already cut a card base for us. I thought this would do well as a top fold. So let's get this burnished down. And this is the standard card base that I usually use. It's 10 and, um, 10 and a half centimeters by the total length is the, the total length of the paper, which is 29.7 centimeters. And it is um, scored halfway. In this case, the halfway is 14.85. If you are using Imperial cardstock, you'll use a half of sheet, which will measure four and a half by 11 this way. And then you score down the middle, which would be a five and a half. Right. Now, the next two pieces cut. You guys know I like to cut a card liner. So the card liner and the DSP, in this case, are going to be cut exactly to the same size. So for metric, we have 10 cm by 14.4 centimeters, and then we have 4 inches by 5 and a quarter. So I will go ahead. We can adhere this one down. Just get it on out of the way for us. Well, that's a good trick. That. And do your best to leave a border. Uh, if you check three edges, one, two, three, and if they all look the same, then you're safe to give it a give it a push. Oh, we've got to. I have an errant corner here. Can't have that. You always have to be careful doing this because the it can backfire on you and you can have a glue sploosh. Nobody likes the glue sploosh. Oh, yep, see glue sploosh. I'm sorry, we'll clean that up later. I'll show you guys how to do that. And of course you get it on our fingers. What's crafting if it's not all over your hands? And in my case, sometimes my face quickly clean up the sploosh. All right, so we're going to set this aside for the moment. The next thing we're going to do is stamp. I like to decorate my insides. Yeah, that didn't sound right, did it? We are using pool party ink. Such a pretty color. Let's get this out of the way. We don't need that anymore. So I just took the hearts from the postage set. Yeah, that looks good. Let's give it a little... Uh oh I touched it down. Oh well, this is why you have two sides. Check my ink. Let's touch it down purposefully this time. 
and here we go. Let's do there we go. Sorry, I had to put my hand in the way, but there wasn't much I could do about that. I'm using my chamois here to clean up my stamp. And that can be put away. Now the next one I'm going to use in this same set is a tiny little solid stamp. Which is so cute. And remember with these solid stamps, you can stamp something else on top of it. So instead of a heart, you could have this look like a... Ugh, I'll show you in another video. It's cool though. Okay. Now these solid stamps, you really want to check your ink. Now see, I've got a hole in that. So let's kind of get it out of there. Okay, that looks nice and even. Let's go a little more. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Stamper solid one. Hopefully on my head is not in the way. There's one there. Double check. Stamp up. And we'll do one here. All right, beautiful. That's all done. Come give it a little scrubby clean. And the next thing we're going to do is stamp our cinnamon. Now I chose to use this really small one. We'll set this aside to be glued to the inside of the, the card like this. So set that aside. Um, we're going to be stamping onto a piece of scrap. Because I'm going to be cutting it out. You can see this is where I cut my sample out. So same thing. Take a minute. Ink up your stamp. Check it. All right. That looks good. I'm going to stamp down. Beautiful. Leave myself around enough to. Ooh, there we go. Sorry. I have to stop doing that. I realize I start talking and then I start doing something and I forget to finish my sentences. I noticed that on the last video. That's a bad habit. I need to stop that. Okay, let's put the stamp pad away. We don't need that anymore. Now we're going to do some die cutting. Now with this, this is the circle dies. Now, as I said, um, this is the, the, not the smallest, but the second one. So I'm going to tape this onto here. As you can see, it fits perfectly. We will die cut that. And then I have another scrap here. I'm going to cut another layer so they can layer up. So I will go ahead and tape this one here. Get another piece of my post-it tape. Okay, those are ready to go into the die cutter. So now the next thing we want to prepare for the die cutter is our, our backing sheet, our vellum sheet. And we're going to be using the largest of the perennial postage dies. So we'll set that down there. Oh, by the way, this is a quarter of a piece of vellum. If you're wondering how big it is, I just cut it into quarters. Get another little piece of tape here. Okay, let's get Bertha out and cut these. I did try this largest perennial die. It will not go through the mini, sadly. That's why we have the big one out here, but I did check that out for you guys. Okay, this one first. Move everything and everybody. Ow. I hate that noise. I always think it's hurting something. I go thump. 
Okay, here's our two smaller beds. Sorry for the grunting. <laughs> that must sound really funny. As I said, I was like, oh no, I'm breaking everything. Let's pull these off. Now our other bits that are going to be die cut. We have, come on, we have our post box. So let's set this down. Come here, post box. Great. It's decided to fight me. Give me a second. You know how that is. Everything is ready to go, and then boom, it's not ready to go. <clears throat> so, we're going to run our post box in next. Remember, face down. How many times if anybody die cutting here, put it in face up? That's uh, irritating. I think sometimes when we're crafting, we get in a hurry because we're so excited to see it done. I keep reminding myself, let's enjoy the journey because this is fun to do. But it's also fun to see what you've created. Now the next thing we're cutting here is the little flag for the post box and the little tie for the... Um, what do you call it? The package, I guess? This is going to be the package. It's an envelope, but oh, that piece isn't big enough. I just grabbed a little handful of scraps out here, so there, this will work. Oops. Always a good idea to save your scraps. Uh-oh. See what I just did? Ooh, I'm glad I looked at it. See if I can run it through without sliding the world. No, nope, can't do it. It doesn't slide around if you just put it on a desktop, but I, I have it on my backing paper here. So it kind of made a bit of a mess. But we're going to need this back and paper in a moment. So, all right, that's all our die cutting done. If we can crunch, I don't want to know what that was. We'll look later. Let's put this put worth the back. Straighten up this because because it's crooked. I hope that's lined back up. Oh, close enough. That my father, who worked for the government, used to say, close enough for government work. Now, here's all of our bits and pieces. We cut a flag. We cut a package. They probably have to do this. I have to sort of poke it out because they're, these are, this is a tiny little fine die cut. But that's what the little holes are for. So let's pull that out. We don't need this anymore. We don't need anymore. We don't need this anymore. Well, that's enough scrap to save. We'll save those bits and pieces. Here's our mailbox. Oh, we didn't do this piece. Ah, oh, darn. Let's get, uh, well, we've got many sitting here as well, so that, save that piece. Here's this piece. Move the dies off. Here's our vellum. I love vellum. Not the easiest thing to work with, but I mean, it's really not a problem either. It's just, it's, I just think it's so pretty. You can do so much with it. Let me grab Minnie out here because I forgot to die cut a piece. <clears throat> Yeah, if you opt to just cut your vellum into a square, you won't need 
a large die cutter, you can actually do this whole thing with the mini. Uh, let's see, is that enough space? I did it. Oh, no. Where'd it go? There you are. We need that piece, which is the support for the post box. Now, my poor, I've ordered some more um, plates because I've got a crack in this one. So it's going to make a big noise. Ah, make me out a liar. Are you my child? That's what my children would do. Oy. Okay. Mini away. There we go. This is our post. Look how cool that is. It puts the wood graining and everything in there. Garbage. Okay. All right. Now, the next bit we're going to do, because we have to set it aside, is we're going to color the edges of our vellum. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. I personally like this one. I have used the um, Stampin' Blend marker, and this is the Dark Pool Party. Uh, where's my... I had a piece of paper here that... There it is. Disreputable. Let's, let's call it disreputable. Now, oh, you can see I've actually did some experimenting doing this, so I can talk about it. I tried doing this with a brush, and oh my lord, tedious was not the word. I also took my stamping pad and, well, basically pretend the pad's open, and I just drew it across like that so I could get the edges colored. That worked, but because this is a, that is a water-based ink, it had to dry. So dry time basically depends on, you know, your room, <laughs> the amount of you know, moisture in the air. But basically it's water drying on plastic. So however long that takes is how long it's going to take to dry if you use the stamp pad. My sample that I did, I just let it go overnight uh, and I could handle it just fine the next day. Um, the easiest way though, is to use a Stampin' Blend because this is an alcohol marker and the alcohol evaporates very, 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 very fast. So this is a good idea to, to use this because, well, no, it's a good idea use if you're hurry. Let's put it that way. Now, why I do this? If you lay this on here, that looks pretty cool, right? I mean, it's all right. But if we color these images, the ed images, no, <laughs> color the image, color the edges, then what we're going to have is we're going to highlight this and it's going to bring out the shape, which sort of hmm, kind of helps the posty image, if that makes any sense. Makes it look more, more noticeable because this particular card is sort of all about the post. Okay, you can put that scene out. It's very difficult to see here but you can see it. So basically just, just have a little tension and, and I'm just sort of running this along the edge. I know you can't see it, but I can sort of feel it bumping along. And I'm going just so I'm sort of kitchen those inside bits as well. Yeah, let's, let's do a little more here. And holding the marker, ooh, on the side. Now, while this is wet, you can wipe it off. So if you feel like you get a bit much on there, you just tap it off with your finger and you can get it. Okay, let's do a little more. Just gonna quickly go all around the edges. Alrighty.
Hope that stopped talking again. I love to color. All right, now this little bit, I said it doesn't look like a lot, but once we put it on the base of, on the front of our card, oh, I don't, I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. It looks like you can. Um, it does show up nicely. So set this aside. We're done with that. Done with my ugly paper. And now let's put some stuff together. This it took me a minute to figure this out. It folds. This swoopy piece is actually the front. That's a technical term, you know, swoopy piece. I'll burnish this down tight. Now this little flappy down here, it's a tiny little flappy. And it bends down like this. And again, really burnish this guy. Now, there we go. Okie dokie. Now, the next little bit is the little post box flag. Now, my European friends here, this is an American post box. And, uh, you know, dear to my heart, I guess. If you guys had these, you would probably really love them. Well, I don't know. They do deliver the mail directly into your house here. But Now, I'm digging through here. These are the round and the square brads. I have used these so much, in fact, that you can't even tell. They have tiny round ones that are black and white. Oh, Lord, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me... Yeah, that's the, the black and the white ones. I'm going to be using a white one, so put that aside. But there's also little square ones in here, too. And these are just really nice little decorative things. But also, in this case, the reason we're using a brad is um, the mailbox little flag will actually move. So if you are giving this card to a, a younger person or a man, they will enjoy seeing the, the thing move. Now, just matching, whoop, just matching the holes. So this goes here and that goes there. If you are not using, and I find to use brads I, if you push it down hard. If you're not using the brad, then you can just glue this down and cover the hole with an embellishment. Maybe a white one or a silver one. There's lots of embellishments out there. Okay, now I'm moving this up and down so it doesn't catch when I put the little package inside. Or did I put that on wrong? No, I didn't. All right, so in the US, well, you put your mail in the box, and if there's mail for the mailman to pick up, you raise the flag. The flags are almost always red, though. And that's how the postman knows to stop at the box, in case he doesn't have anything to leave off. All right, there, there are plenty of days you don't get mail. I get much more stuff shoved through my post box. And the nice thing is um, you don't, you can send advertisements, but they have to be through the post. So people can't just run up and stick stuff in your post box. You know, all of the advertisements for add-ons. And oh, my favorite one is when we lived um, in the apartment block. We used to get ads all the time for replacing windows. And I would just look at that and go, yeah, I'm going to forward it to the land landlord. Okay, we're going to put this together. I like to put my glue and glue the tab to the outside. You can turn the tab, put the glue on the other side of the tab, and turn it to the inside if that is your wish. I couldn't tell a lot of difference. I did both ways. I liked this one better because... Again, we're going to be sticking a little package in our box, and we don't want anything to catch on that package. All right, so there is our post box done. Well, actually, not quite. Let's finish it. Let's put the supporting legs on. Now, I did an extra step here. Ah, 
not sure if it's necessary or not. Who knows, right? Now, this is face up. Tiny little bit of glue. And stick that like that. Okay, I'm going to give that a sec to dry. I um, need for this to stay together because we're going to assemble everything and then place it down on the vellum. The reason we're going to do that is. You know, vellum's difficult to adhere to anything. I'm just using a bit of cellar tape here. And when you adhere vellum down, the problem seems to be that the glue shows through. So this way, we're going to attach this to our vellum, and then we're going to stick... I'll show you. Okay, here's our tiny post box done. Here's our greeting. I'm going to use a bit of tape on this. Now, both size circle greetings work well on this. This is um, going to a friend, so I didn't want to use the I love you one, but I'm using the scent with love. So just sort of center this up where it goes. Pop it down. Lovely thing about center greetings is when you're doing, you know, matting like this, it makes life easier because you don't have to make sure it's right side up. Now, here's our little envelope. Now, this is cute. I'll be doing another one for you guys where I'm going to be using these envelopes. So I'm going to push this down and push this down and push this down and push that down. Let's do a little burnish burnish here. Oh, through with these guys. Let's get that out of here. Now, in this case, see, this does, this is so cute. This does make a little tiny envelope, so you can use it as an envelope. In this case, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to make it into a package, which is part of the reason we did this color. Let's get a little glue, more glue out here, gang. Stick that down, stick a little here. Down. Hold it a minute. One of the reasons I didn't just cut a square is I, I like the dimension of this. It's not huge, but it's it's fatter than it would be had I just cut a square. You can just there there is a die to just cut the square if you wanted to do that, if you didn't want to go for the whole envelope thing, but I, I liked the extra dimension that it gave you. And now this is a package string. Now in the U.S., you're not allowed to wrap packages in paper, but in here, uh, um, in England, it's, it's pretty much expected. Can you notice I'm using my wonderful silicone gluey mat here which when I get glue everywhere when that dries I'll just roll it off of there come on it does not want to stick straight there we go. Oops. Perfect. Now what I do, we use my big scissors here because they're they're my glue gobbers. Just pop up those little tiny bits. But you don't have to. Only if you're a completionist like me, make yourself crazy over details that don't matter. There we go. And the back edge goes right here. Oops. Like that. Ta-da. Now you can glue it down with a glue dot or you can just leave it loose. Either way, it's not going to matter too much. 
Now we're going to lay this out where we want it. Now this, like I said, this, this is not a fastened down yet. So we're going to line this up. We want our post box about right here. So I'm looking, it's going to be close to the bottom. And as far as side to side goes, it is going to touch the inner. So just center it up on there. And then this will go on the bottom. Whoops, right underneath like that. Now, um, vellum is, is funny stuff, and you can put glue on it. it. It glues just fine, but it's slippery. So I prefer to use something with a little more heft to it when I'm gluing vellum. So I have gotten out my big guns here, and I'm going to use some glue dots. Because once this glue dot is down, it ain't coming back up. So let's, let's dot it up. Woo! Be sure your tool doesn't uh, come loose on you. Whoops, come on. Ah, Blue Dots and I don't have a good relationship. We have respect for one another. But there's no love lost here. It doesn't behave for me. I don't behave for it. It doesn't want to do it. I don't care. I make it do it. All right. Just line this up. Have a look. You are going to go here. Which puts you... Right oh, stuck to me. No, no, don't stick to me, please. Right there. Excellent. Now for our big piece, we're going to use a bit of tear and tape. You can use, uh, if you have stamp and seal, you can use stamp and seal. It's a little bit wider than this, though. That's why I like the tear and tape. So I'm just going to put a bit of tear and tape here. Whoops. What did I just say? It's too wide. So get it down the middle. There's one. Two, three, okay, pull off our good one. Hmm. Obviously the tear and tape doesn't like me either. stick down. Oh, see? Crafting with the clots. One, two, give me two. Two. No, it doesn't want to come up to that one. There you go. All right, all you guys lay down. And now we stick this. Still just lining up here. Yeah. There we go, stuck it down. And now for my next trick. See, this is stuck down. We will put our tape on the back side here. So you guys get to watch me fumble around again. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray for fumbles. But we're putting it right over where the tape was before. Now 
and this will hold our vellum down. I'm going to put a little tiny extra piece here. And a couple of pieces here. I put a lot put a lot on here so you guys can really watch me fumble around. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Yeah, keep your eye on this tricky tear and tape stuff because on the vellum, like I said, vellum's plastic. So it doesn't... Uh... Things don't stick the same as paper. Which I know that you know that. I don't know why I'm belaboring the point. Probably because I don't have anything else to say. Ah, there we go. Okay. Now, as you can see, no evidence of glue. Now, because this is a metric card and it's a little bit longer and a little bit narrower than if we were using a um, uh, an imperial card base, this isn't going to fit exactly the same. If you were putting this on an imperial card base, you would have an even amount of this showing all the way around. Um, because we are using the metric, this is going to have some space top and bottom to it, which is sort of another reason that I put the coloring on it to make it stand out more. So it looks like, you know, it's all on purpose. Okay, what do you guys think? Good one? So we'll put our, we'll glue this down on the inside. I'm not gonna glue it down for the moment because I always write on them and if I mess it up, I can turn it over and restamp it. So I'm not gonna do it for the moment, but this is it. This is our card. Hope you enjoy it. It is completely interactive for anybody that wants to fiddle with it. Package comes in and out. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed making it. And I hope everyone has a crafty day. Thank you. Oh, if you're watching this on the Rewind on YouTube, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more crazy, crazy crafting 